So tonight will be a very high level overview of resort condominiums. We're not going to get into detail about specific properties, but we can certainly address any specific questions at the end or one on one with you afterwards. For some of you, there's going to be some repetition, uh, but we do want to do a complete overview for those who are unfamiliar with this concept and hearing about it for the first time tonight. We are going to get into what and where these properties are, who they appeal to, when you can purchase, and what to consider when choosing one. We've found that most people have experience buying resale homes, but many are unfamiliar with the pre-construction process. So we'll go into a little bit of detail about how that works as well. I have about a dozen slides, probably take me 20, 25 minutes to get through them. So resort condominiums are hotel type properties in vacation destinations. There are things nearby like golf courses, lakes, ski hills, something going on that makes people want to come and stay there on the weekend or on vacation. They're often self-catering units with either a full kitchen or a kitchenette. Uh, size and style will range from a studio all the way up to three or four bedroom townhouses or fully detached homes depending on the property. The ownership of these units is whole ownership, just like any other condominium in Ontario. One unit is owned by one person or family or corporation. You may have heard of fractional ownership, which is where ownership is shared between maybe 10 people and each of them get five weeks of use per year. Some of the properties that we're talking about do have fractional ownerships available, but that's not what we're talking about tonight. We are strictly talking about whole ownership condominiums. Uh, because these properties are operated as resorts or hotels, there is an opportunity to earn income. Whenever you're not using your unit, you can allow the resort to rent it out like a hotel, and then you and the resort split the profits. I thought it might be helpful to give you some context here in Ontario. These are a few of the resorts that we're most familiar with. You've probably uh, know some of them and you may have even stayed at them, uh, but you may not have realized that when you stay there, you're actually staying in a unit that is privately owned by an individual rather than the hotel or the resort. The ones up in Muskoka tend to be focused around lakes or golf, and then of course, Horseshoe Resort and Blue Mountain are ski hills. They do all run as year-round resorts. Some do a better job than others of drawing guests in all year long, but they're all continuously improving and adding services and amenities. So let's talk a little bit about who this might be geared to. Um, it's going to appeal to a couple of types of buyers. Uh, the first is investors who are already thinking about buying a condominium uh, for long-term rental as an investment. Typically, they appreciate the fact that there's the potential to earn more income here than with a long-term tenant. And as well, they're not dealing with leases or tenants. Retirees also really like these properties. Depending on the property, you may be able to live there as a home. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. The other group of buyers that like these units tend to be people who are considering a weekend getaway for personal use. They want some place they can go, but for whatever reason, they don't want to buy a standalone cottage. And these are some of the reasons for that. These properties offer a lot more luxury than a seasonal cottage in the woods. Uh, there are resort amenities like spa, restaurants, pools, room service. Uh, cottages are notoriously a lot of work. And uh, Derek can attest that we are constantly puttering around fixing or upgrading things. And with a condo, someone else is taking care of all the upkeep and maintenance for you. 
They're also in really desirable areas, often on big lakes, but at a much lower price point than what a freehold cottage in that area might cost. In the past decade, we've seen buyers wanting to rent their cottage to help cover some of the costs. And this is very controversial. Every municipality is looking at how to manage these rental properties, and they're all dealing with it differently. Some are enforcing licensing for short-term rentals. Others are banning it altogether. A resort condo is like owning an Airbnb, but without any complaints from the neighbors or bylaw officers at the door. Probably the best thing about these uh, condos is that the income you're earning is truly passive. You literally do nothing. Someone else is dealing with advertising, booking, entertaining guests, cleaning complaints, not you. So let's talk about some of the differences that you'll want to consider when you're zeroing in on a specific property. As I mentioned before, some of these properties you can purchase, move in, and live there. It can be your primary residence. Muskoka Bay, for example, has a ton of retirees living on the property. Other resorts have a requirement for the unit to be available for rent a certain number of weeks per year, 9, 10, 12. It depends on the property. If you're looking for a cottage, that's not really a problem. You'll also want to understand the model for those rentals. With a rental pool, all of the unit owners share in profits and potentially losses of the resort. So if you own a unit with a great view that everybody loves, it'll be rented a lot, so more wear and tear, but you're not actually earning any more than a similar unit that no one likes because it's by the elevator or overlooking a parking lot. A rental program, on the other hand, provides income based on the rental of your specific unit. It's a great unit, people like it, it gets rented more and you earn more. You'll also wanna consider where it is and what's around it, especially if you're looking for personal use. You're gonna pick a property that appeals to you. Some are smaller boutique type properties with only a few dozen units. Others are much larger with hundreds of units. You're also gonna consider the amenities that you like um, things like golf, beach, pools, the later phases in a development are going to mean that there are operational pools and restaurants and kids programs and spas, whereas with a new development, it might be years until those things are in place. So depending on what you want, it's going to drive your decision. You're going to think about the prime season. When is it that most guests want to visit this property and what's available during the other seasons? If there are no winter activities at a golf resort, they're not going to draw guests, which affects income potential. This is a poster that I just got recently advertising Beerhurst at Deerhurst in March. So it's technically a golf and beach resort, but they do a great job of offering year-round programming to bring people in 12 months of the year. Next, you'll consider what size unit you're interested in. Uh, it may be driven by what you need for personal use, or you could be looking at it as an investor and we're gonna try and pick one that has the potential for the most profit. All of these different factors are going to determine the rental potential of the unit. Uh, if it's an established resort, there will be a history of occupancy and operation, so you'll have a sense of what you're buying. If it's a brand new project, it may be years before the rental program is actually up and running and you're seeing any income. That can be seen as a bonus by someone who's preferring to have exclusive use, but of course, as an investor, you would see that as a negative because you're not making any money. Okay, a few different times in the life of these units that you can purchase them. The first is pre-construction. Um, typically, this is two to five years from occupancy, and you are buying on paper. There's nothing to see on site. They haven't broken ground yet, um, but the resort may, may already be in existence. 
The next opportunity to purchase are what we call assignment sales. So this is when someone who bought pre-construction two or five years prior has decided that they either cannot or don't want to close on the property. So what you're buying here is that original purchase contract with the developer. Of course, it's generally at a higher price point than the original purchase, something that lines up more with current market value. With all pre-construction condos, when the units are finished, some will come up for sale. And that is the same process as buying resale two, three, five years in. With these units, you can start enjoying them right away. If they're already in the rental program, you can start earning income right away as well. So why do people buy pre-construction? One of the reasons is that these purchases are leveraged investments. The value goes up on the whole purchase price, not just how much money you have invested. For example, if you've invested $200,000 to purchase a million dollar condo, over the years that that deposit is invested, the value of a million dollar asset is what's grown. A lot of first time buyers are attracted to pre-construction as well because it gives you lots of time to save money prior to the closing. When you buy a resale cottage, the deposit is typically at least 20% and it's due on closing, which is usually 30, 60, 90 days after you purchase it. With pre-construction, that deposit is spread out sometimes for as much as a year, a year and a half, maybe even with the last 5% not being due until occupancy. So you've got these gradual deposits that just make things a little bit easier. With the desire for cottage rental or cottage real estate, we often see bidding wars at lower price points. With pre-construction, that doesn't happen. Prices are fixed. Either your agent gets you a unit or they don't. You're not competing on price with other buyers offering to pay more. Uh, unlike resale investment condos, you're not dealing with any tenants and repairs. Um, because it's new construction, there's also a seven year tearing warranty that protects from major defects. So if you are thinking about pre-construction, you need to understand that some realtors have VIP status with certain developers. That means we get special early information and access on projects. And there's a lot of reasons this is a huge benefit to you as a consumer. Derek and I have a VIP relationship with a developer called Freed. They are the largest resort condo owner in Ontario, and they have big plans to bring a higher end product to cottage country. The four resort properties that they own are Deerhurst, Muskoka Bay, Horseshoe Resort, and they also own development land at Blue Mountain that will be coming up. So let's talk about why it's beneficial to work with agents who have this VIP access instead of one of the other 92,000 agents in Ontario. First, you know about the project and have access to it before anyone else. A great project might not even make it to public launch. About a year ago, uh, we had a project, there were over 300 unit requests for about 70 units. Because we have this VIP status, we were able to get units for all of our buyers. There are no guarantees, but in that case, well over 200 buyers and agents were disappointed that they didn't get a unit. Developer pricing is fixed. You're not getting a discount if you don't use a realtor, so why wouldn't you want that professional representation and expertise in a purchase this size? Typically, the way pricing works is they go up at intervals through the selling phase. They sell a bunch of units, the prices go up, they sell a bunch more, the prices go up again. So as a buyer, buying early means you're paying the lowest possible price for that project. You're also getting the best selection of units. The size, the way it faces, what floor it's on, all these things matter to you if you're looking for personal use or if you're an investor, you want to be sure that you get one of the money-making units. If those aren't enough reasons to work with a VIP realtor, 
uh, there are usually a bunch of VIP incentives that the developer allows us to offer our buyers as well. This is um, just a sample from a recent project. It includes things like the extended deposit structure, capped development fees, a furniture package included at no charge, assignment at no charge. So these are the types of things that you'll get as VIP incentives early in the process. So how does the pre-construction process work? Um, a lot of it happens before that VIP launch. We do quite a bit of planning and preparation with you. Um, if you think you have an interest in any type of free construction, we need to have you on our radar. Uh, once the VIP launch happens, things go from zero to 60 very quickly. And if we start doing the prep work with you then, you may not get a unit. Um, one of the things we look at early on is how much cash you have to invest. And from that, we're going to calculate a purchase price. So for example, if you have $200,000 that can be locked up for a few years until closing, you can buy a unit for a million dollars. Of course, there's paperwork. <laughs> we need to verify your identity, um, gather contact information for all of the buyers that are in your group. And we will talk to you about your purchase goals, if they're personal use or investment, uh, what you need, what you want, what you like, and we'll help you zero in on a property. And then we wait. At some point, we are notified that a project is coming up. We may know a few details and we'll share that with our clients. At this point, if you're interested in a project, we register you with the developer. There's no commitment here. It's simply, we have these buyers interested in this project. Here's how many units we might need to get you in line for a unit before that VIP launch even happens. Usually VIP tours are available at that point so we can uh, get you in and go to the property and visit them. Um, Sometimes we book an afternoon with a sales rep from the project and we invite our clients to come up and check it out. Once that VIP launch happens, uh, floor plans and pricing are released. So in very short order, they start allocating units to those VIP agents. They offer specific unit numbers at a specific price for specific buyers. We'll know at that point the floor plan they're offering, the floor, the view, and the price. We focus on doing the prep work in advance so that if you're offered a unit, it's one that you want. If you've changed your mind and want something different, we go back and we ask for a different unit. Uh, sometimes in preparation for the VIP launch, they invite the platinum agents to come in and work with the developer um, on some marketing. And this is a video that we did for Horseshoe Resort. Um, we had a ton of fun pretending that we were movie stars. At Horseshoe. Over the weekend, every, every season. season. Horseshoe Resort. Horseshoe Resort. Horseshoe Resort. Okay, so if you have an agent that has a personal video, you know they have VIP access. <laughs> um, once you have been allocated a unit and you've decided, yes, this is uh, one I'm interested in, the developer will send you an agreement of purchase and sale for signature electronically. And this is when that first deposit is due, typically 10 or $20,000. Typically they're not going to cash that check until 10 days later, but they wanna have it in hand so they know you're serious. Once you sign that agreement of purchase and sale, this is when the 10 day cooling off period that happens with all Ontario pre-construction condos starts. And this is a time that we have to do further due diligence to make sure you wanna proceed with this sale. We recommend a legal review. It costs about $350 plus HST. Most of the time they go back to the developer and they ask for additional caps and inclusions that more than cover the fee that you're paying them. 
and you also know exactly what you're uh, getting into as well. If you haven't been on a property tour yet, then we will meet with the property with a rep from the developer and uh, show you around so you can see exactly what you're buying. Generally, one of the requirements of the purchase agreement is proof of financial capability. So even though you're not closing for two to five years and a lot can change between now and then, the developer wants proof that at this moment in time, you can afford the unit you're purchasing. So that's going to be either a mortgage pre-approval, which we can help you with, or a letter from your bank stating that you have sufficient funds. As part of the agreement of purchase and sale, the developer will provide a schedule for amounts and dates for those post-dated deposit checks. If during those 10 days you decide you like what you're seeing and want to proceed with the purchase, you don't need to do anything. The sale becomes firm automatically after 10 days. If, on the other hand, you decide that this unit or project is not for you, there's a process where we sign some paperwork and you rescind or cancel the offer. It's as simple as that. So now we have some time for questions. Derek, I don't know if we have any in the chat. 